All right. ASMR, right? Anyway, so you have a problem like I do. Quick time movies that are inside of these pre-packaged HUD elements in Rocket Stock or Shutterstock. 400 plus, it's amazing. Copyright 2017. Don't work in 2022 in After Effects. Why is that? Because somebody didn't want to pay the licensing fees. And I don't mean Rocket Stock or Shutterstock. Adobe. Adobe didn't want to pay whoever made that algorithm or has the rights to it or they didn't negotiate back and forth. So we get stuck with the claim that they're from moving forward, they're going to use uh, ProRes and other things only. So what you have to do is find a way to bring that thing in and convert it. So there's a couple ways to do this. First, I want to do is tell you to go to the Creative Cloud and or your, your image to install 2017 of Media Encoder. That is the last year this is going to work. So 2017 Media Encoder right here, right? We got that. This is a Microsoft Windows, very similar in OS X. So what we want to do is import a file. So what we're going to do is we're going to import some of the files that I have. I have them stored externally because I don't use this stuff that much. I had an inkling to put it into a stabilization video idea. I thought it'd be fun. Uh, so we have projects, nope, libraries, motion graphics, interface HUD elements. And one through four has the MOV files. I think three or four has the lines, so I'm going to use line three in MOV. Bring that in. It's up here. Now, this is interesting. Go up here to where it says QuickTime for the wrapper or the style. Now, in here in preset, you can go to GoPro Cinema Form RGB 12-bit with alpha. That does work. It does work. But it also makes it about four times as large, three to four times as large, because obviously... 4 to 12 bits. There's a lot more bits going on in the alpha and all these other things. It's easy to do and you can do it. But let's let's do that first and I'll show you what's going to go on. So I'm going to put this on the desktop and it's going to have the same name. And I'm going to save it. Don't put it in the same folder. Put it somewhere else. And I'll tell you why later. And render it. Boom. There it is. It's done. Okay. So if I take the original file and I try to bring it into what I'm doing, let me show you here. I have lines 03, right? If I bring 03 into After Effects, I'll say After Effects error, the source compression type is not supported. After Effects error will, cannot be imported, is damaged or unsupported. It's not damaged, it's not unsupported. There's nothing wrong with your operating system. It's Adobe's fault or whoever they deal with. So let's go to the desktop now where I've changed, I've converted it. And let's go back for a second actually. This file is 884 kilobytes. The file that I just made is 3,341 kilobytes. That's ridiculous, but it works. Let's bring it in and run it through. As you see, I had 30 seconds. So that's a pretty small file, small segment of the 30 seconds. There you go. It works. Let's duplicate it, move it, and then maybe move it down a little bit. So you get that kind of like a stagger feel. There you go. Whatever. That works. You can keep doing that. So as you can tell, it does work. It reads pretty fast if you have a fast system. But uh, it's not optimal. Go out there and see what happens. Nice. It works. Let's go back and let's optimize this. That's a lot. Four times bigger. This is already eight and a half gigs as is for the 424 files. Nobody wants to have over a Blu-ray of data on their hard drive, even though we have terabytes of space. Why waste it? Let's do it the right way. So let's go back to the media encoder and let's drop in another file. And on the desktop, I'll take this, I'll, I'll, I could rename it. Let's do 04 for instance, right? Or we can do the same one. All right. So let's keep that there and I will rename it when I, I do this again. Let me go into media encoder, go to my explorer again, back to where I was. And we have line 03 in. Now, line 03 in, we're going to go into GoPro Cinema Form RGB, and we're going to change that. I just clicked on that right there in the preset. Let's do the drop down, right, and do custom. In custom, we could do video codec PNG. See all these different ones here? Cinema Form, all stuff. The original stuff we had was a PNG. So let's not photo PNG, just PNG. All right. And then codec settings. 
interlace, filter best, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see. What does this say? Adjust the settings, bring to front. That's fine. Okay, so anyway. So now we have this. Let's take a look if PNG match source. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Let's make sure it says depth, 8 bits per pixel and alpha, because they're already detected in that MOV that it had it. Or that's already the built in preset. Okay. Don't worry about maximum depth. Just do that. 8 bits plus uh, bits per pixel plus alpha. And at the very top, PNG. Say OK. At the top, you're going to see QuickTime Custom now. And here, if we're going to render to my desktop, let's call it Lino 3 n You want to keep the name the same. This is just an example. Dash PNG version. So you know the difference. Let's render it and watch what happens. It's quick. It's a very small file. And let's go to my desktop and let's look at the difference between the two of them. So, line... O3 in MOV is 3,341 kilobytes. Line O3 in PNG version is better than the QuickTime version that has JPEG 2000, which was a great format for like 20 years. Incredible compared to the regular JPEG format. 745 kilobytes. Let's drop it in and see if it works. And here it is. And let's see if it's transparent. Well, we don't really know at first because that's just black. So let's bring in a video I made that I wanted to use this for anyway have it you can hear the heat in my apartment's going it's winter time uh, 3d motion graphics stabilizer renders there you go okay so that's it all right so yep it's still transparent i'll make it a little more visible by going like this into the video part yeah use a stabilizer i thought that would be kind of fun have some of the people and the dancers and stuff. So let's see how that goes. Still transparent, saves a lot of space. The Cineform. Wait for this car to go by. The Cineform 12 bit plus alpha is great for certain things, especially if you have a camera that has a very high bit depth. But that's for something completely different. That's for something way different. And we're not dealing with that. We're dealing with 8-bit, uh, you know, video segments that were HUD elements that this company was reselling. So how do you do all this stuff at once? That's complex. So let's go into this area right here. This is where I have the original files. And inside of each one are the MOVs. So if you see this, you'll notice that they're all the MOVs or I do this. You can see there's a lot. All right. What do we do to get them all at once? Well, on Windows or Apple OS X, you do star dot, and you can do the extension MOV. Press enter, and it should show them all. So if I do control shift five on Windows, you'll see that I've gotten 105 elements. That's in that one folder. Let's go back up to the actual entire thing and do the same thing again, star dot MOV. And then control shift five again. You might click on here. And look at that, 424 items. Let's move that to the side of the screen here. And then go over here to Media Encoder. Control-A to select our demonstration. Get rid of it. And now, let's move all of these, Control-A, and, dr oh, control and drop and drag to the other side. It's going to take forever to read and make sure it's not messed up. And it's going to check each file, like you were doing a download in a way. And I'm doing it over the network, so it's a little bit slower. It's only like a megabit a second. I mean, uh, a gigabit uh, connection and older rotator hard drives. So let's cancel it. And they're all done. We waited for all 424. And if you look, it says H.264. Not what we want. Click anywhere and then select all of them on this side. And then change any of them to QuickTime. Not PNG, but QuickTime for the first part, which is the wrapper. We wanted to think it's a PNG with a, I mean, a QuickTime with a bunch of PNGs inside, not a PNG with hundreds of PNGs for every one of these. It's tens of thousands of files. You don't want that. All right. So once it goes through all that, you actually see it says, oh, QuickTime. All right. Instead of GoPro Res Cinema Form, click one time. It's going to say, hey, 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 you're going to do this to a lot of different files. Are you sure? See, so, yeah, I'm sure. Fine. Don't worry. What, would we, what did we do before? 
we made sure the video codec in here was PNG. Then we scrolled down and then we made sure that it was 8 bits per channel and alpha. Everything's fine. Go in here to check to make sure. You can take a look at what you were working on. It'll show the first one, which is the circles. Say OK. Now it's ready. It does a couple of computations. It'll take a while if you're doing all 424. Next important thing, which is kind of a pain in the butt, you could save all of these to the same space that it was before, where it was, the same exact spot, and it'll save them to the same place. And it'll give it an underscore one because it'll rename it. And I don't do that. I could just move all these back and think, where did I put this? And just place them back where they were. But you could use a program like NameWiz in Windows and other, you know, just go to NameWiz and pop that on there and take the last two characters off and do all this stuff. But how about we just put it into a folder and then just convert them and then move them back manually. Now, the other way is great too, but so for right now, this is good. And if you click on here, output file, where is it going to output to? I put it into a folder called converted and it's all gym all together. This works if the files don't have the same file names, but they shouldn't in the first place if the people selling these things do a good job, but just put it into a folder for now and then just let it convert. It'll be the exact same file name and you could just drop them back in to where you had them and it will replace the original ones. Now, my point of advice, I would make a copy of this folder and I'd paste it somewhere else on a different hard drive or in a storage unit, you know, put it on something safe and put it away on the shelf or something like that, a $12, 128 gigger, you know, and, or burn it on a Blu-ray, put it on a hard drive that you might have and put it away for a rainy day kind of a thing. But, and re relabel it, put underscore 2017 and under or whatever you want to do. In this case, when this is done, I'm going to escape this and say, no, I don't want to continue this. But I just want to show you that now, if I wanted to in here, if I minimize this, put this back up, I'm going to go to my D drive uh, converted, and we will see that these are here. So let's just put a circle on there. These aren't my favorite ones, but we'll drop it on and see if it brings it in now. And it does. Look at that. There's one other important thing I want to show you in a second, but I'm going to scale down and find a cool dark area like my friends here have it kind of like zooming on them, shaking hands. So I'm going to pop up. I found even on a 2080 Ti with 10 gigs of VRAM and a 32 thread, 16 core, 38, 3950 Ryzen that it was doing like dog crap slow if I rotated this. So if you go down here to toggle set switches modes back and forth, you will see 3D. Click on that and you open it up and transform and have fun with, I think it's the X, Y. I always get these wrong. Uh, maybe the Y. Uh, it goes in there. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, maybe uh, the X rotation. And show that we're we're getting it in the focus or just keeping it there. It's kind of fun. So I'll keep it there. And if I tried to preview that, you have to right click on your comp and go to composition settings. Make sure the 3D renderer is not Cinema 4D and it's not NVIDIA's fault. Watch this. Let's start maybe here. Cool. Oh my God. So, and my fans blunk in the background. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? It's, you do not need 3D rendering of a surface on a texture with basic ray tracing skills with alpha. It's, it's killing the graphics card and it's just bad programming. So, and you can still hear it going crazy. So in settings, go to 3D renderer and go to classic 3D. Adobe, hire somebody to do better. We need it better. So now watch this. What do you know? It works fine. And you could slide it. It's already stored in the temp area. I have it on an NVMe drive. Ah, oh, there you go. That's a great one to put it on. And then you can even have that. I can move that around. And I could track that and make it go around. That'd be kind of fun. And I stabilize the video side. Big deal. So again, you can mass move all of these, rename them. If you made a folder, I'm going to show you what I did. I put it into one of my drives as library, motion graphics, interface. So digits, let's say. If you'll notice, there's an underscore one on all of the, oh, 
an underscore one on all these. It's terrible uh, on the ones that I changed. So there's digit six, five, all this. So if I right click, sort by the date that I did this stuff, you'll notice here that these are the new ones that I did. I don't want the old ones. Look how much bigger the... This is when I thought Cinema Form was better, and it's not. The PNG inside the QuickTime wrapper is better. But anyway, we'll watch. Get rid of these. Delete them. And you have the new ones, which aren't really doing such a great job. So if you run NameWiz, which is a great program, and I think it's freeware now, uh, it can go into that folder right here, copy it, go into the top up there, paste it in. Now we're in the interface area. Now watch this. Uh, insert delete. If I want to go from position on the right, from position one on the right, left, right, we're going this way. Either it says digit 01, digit 01. Uh, this way, one, zero, digit, 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 backwards. So position from right or left, you'll see the difference, right? From the right, if you delete backwards, it's going to do it. Both of those have to be checked. Process subfolders. That's amazing. So if I said yes, apply. Now it's changed all. Let's go back. See how it changed it all? Now you could definitely have all those in place and then move them to the original location. Me personally, it's it, it's tomato, tomato. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's a good way to do it. You could actually just do this one at a time, get rid of the older ones, put the new ones in. It's, sorting through 400 things isn't that big of a deal, but that's one way to do it. So there you go. Use um, Media Encoder 2017, which you can get in the Creative Cloud itself, or if you have it already downloaded, you have it. Um, install it. Now 2018, 2017. And again, you want QuickTime as the wrapper. That's on the left side. When it comes to the preset, you can go to custom and you can save that custom. You can see on there and you can save the custom thing you built. And remember that the custom compression that you want, or the codec, I should say, is PNG. Not to be confused with PNG as the wrapper, but PNG is the codec. Scroll down and you'll see depth 8 bit plus alpha. Then you can save all of them, go and take a lunch break, come back. It's all done. You could move them by hand or you could use NameWiz and rename them. I think there's probably a program for Apple that does the same. If you're adventurous, you could write a script that does that, but that's ridiculous at this point. You know, This should actually be done by Shutterstock and Ro Rocketstock, but I mean, there's limitations to what they probably are allowed to do with their contracts or whatever they did. So there it is. You can now... Bring that stuff in, and the PNG wrapper is much smaller than Cinema Form, which I tried at first, and I thought that was the right way to do it. It's not. Use QuickTime with PNG, and I have to thank somebody that I have in the comments of this video that I saw how to do this, and I was a little quizzical about the PNG first, and I made the mistakes, and a bunch of PNG showed up, like 300 for the one, one little video, and then I realized, oh, QuickTime wrapper, PNG's inside as the compression. So good luck, and I hope this works out great for you because it was a pain in the butt for me. And now uh, maybe Shutterstock and Rocketstock will read this because I'll put a link on their YouTube, and all of you that buy this can find out how to use something you paid for. See you later.